Well, certainly, um, you know, we try and time these videos so that the files aren't that large. There's probably a lot you could continue to talk about Dick Scott, so let's, let's go and keep going. Well, one thing I thought was he had a subtle ability was we had two a day workouts that we were talking about, and they're usually three to five miles. And in the morning, he'd come out, and about a mile into the thing, he'd start taunting people and taking the lead. <laughs> he drove us in the morning. Sure. And, and he would be going, he'd get us up to full speed, and no one would ever notice that he'd also drop off. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else kept on going. So it, it, was, it, it was a subtle thing. Um, that, he, that he had a trick. He's good to do it, and he, we had killed him in the interval workouts, but that yeah. morning workout was just, didn't allow him to slack up. Yeah. That's right. What time of the morning was this, usually? Six. Six, six a.m. He's out there running right. you guys up, getting his yeah. feet up. Mm -hmm. He ended up qualifying for Boston Marathon when I think he was about 30. He didn't tell us that either. Yeah. He basically waited until he qualified. He was running with, I now a member of the Cleveland West Roadrunners Club, and he was with the founder, Jess Bell, and they got him to run yeah. that. And he wouldn't even tell us until he qualified. But, but technically, from a knowledge of the sport, you know, a, a master. But I, for me, as much, it was about character. Uh, he set a tone and a standard, both in what you observed in his marriage and with his family, the importance of school. Seven guys, right? Three have their PhDs. Three have their master's. One retired at 45, right? So uh, his emphasis on school and scholastics, uh, character, his passion for the sport, and his commitment. You think about these coaches back then, they were probably making, as a stipend, $250 a season. And he was with us from August 1st, two-day workouts, morning workouts, afternoon. I give credit to his wife, right, as a partner, uh, the kind of support she had to allow this to happen. Very great but for both of them. Technically, yeah. she was the coach of the girls team. Girls well. team. Yeah. So she but started you, doing. You can think about this for all of us. No running for me, which meant no scholarship to Miami, no job in Cincinnati, no meeting my wife, no kids. You can trace that all the way back to his passion about school, scholastics, character, and effort and hard work. Yeah. The one thing that he did my freshman year is he actually came to my Eagles scout ceremony. We did. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, so that was one that um, I had a motivation to get it done because I knew that I wasn't going to have much more time in high school. I didn't know that. But he, he, he came. And, and that's a heck of an accomplishment yeah. as well, yeah. to be, yeah. be an Eagle Scout. Yeah. Yeah. Big commitment. But, but that helped, you know, because actually Mike and Chris were the ones who got all the scholarship offers. So it <laughs> helped to have good academics so I could run D1 at Cornell. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So. I had a couple Olympians on my team, a couple All-Americans. Yeah. So.